Hi, my name's Chase. I run the most popular men's dating advice site on the internet, with 6,000 satisfied students now dating and sleeping with girls who used to be out of their leagues. Today, I'm going to show you one simple date you can ask a girl out on. This date makes her have sex with you and become your girlfriend by the end of the date. The date works almost without fail, and almost any girl will say yes to it. We've based this date on 127 research papers published in the top scientific journals. And since then, I've had a selection of my top students test it out. It's given each of us more sex and devoted girlfriends than we know what to do with. Before I tell you about it, one word of caution. What I will show you how to do is the exact opposite of what everyone else says you should do. If you're a woman, close this page now, because when I reveal how women choose who they'll have sex with and who they won't, it'll shock you, and it might make you uncomfortable. If you're a guy, keep watching, though don't tell your friends you've seen this video. The one date puts so much power to get sex and girlfriends into your hands, it makes other guys feel weak around you. Now, you may think you need good looks, a cool car, buff muscles, or a great job to get a girlfriend. However, if you use the approach to dating I'll show you today, you don't need any of that. By accessing these scientific methods, you can cause a girl to have sex with you and become your girlfriend by the end of just one simple date. And it's easy to ask any girl out on this date and get her to say yes just about every time. I'll show you how in a moment. Here's the catch. The date you use has to be the right kind of date for the girl who's involved. So stick around, and in a few minutes, I'll show you which date to use to get her ready to have sex. Fact is, every girl you'll meet falls into one of three different boxes. There are the girls who need what I call the incredible connection first. If she's this kind of girl, what she's yearning to experience with a man is similarity. And if you don't give her this, you will never have sex with her, let alone make her your girlfriend. She'll leave the date and delete you from her phone because she thinks you and her are just too dissimilar. However, other girls don't need much connection at all. They're looking for arousal. I'll show you how to give them that without getting slapped or being too obvious in a moment. You're going to want to stick around for that too. Because if you try a sit-down date with girls like this, you'll blow it every time and never know where you went wrong. And there's a third group of women that doesn't need connection or arousal. They know they like you immediately, and they immediately know they want to hook up. It'll surprise you how often this happens, because most men miss the signs. And no, we're not just talking about sluts. Even girls who are virgins can fall into this category. Now, don't worry if you're not good at connections or arousal or reading the signs. I'm going to show you exactly how to do all this as we go through this presentation. First, I've got to tell you a story about myself that'll help you discover the power of the one date. This was the most humiliating date of my life, and I don't like telling the story. However, you've got to hear it to get why you have to read her signs and give her the exact experience she needs. After that, I'll tell you exactly how to recognize which of the three kinds of dates she requires to have sex. Cool? You see, I actually started out as a pretty normal guy, except I wasn't lucky with women, because I wasn't skilled with women. Maybe you can relate. Every time I wanted to ask a girl out, I'd get nervous and talk myself out of it. And even when I knew a girl was into me, nine times out of ten, I still couldn't pull the trigger. Part of the reason was I feared I'd get rejected. Yet what scared me more was that a girl might say yes, because I knew I didn't know what to do with girls, and if this girl went on a date with me, she'd find that out too. The night I thought that was finally about to change was a freezing, snowy night in February 2006. Ice covered the ground, and I lived pretty far away from where the bars and nightclubs were. Yet I got a text from this girl named Lisa begging me to come out because she needed to see me. I almost didn't want to go, yet this was Lisa we were talking about. So I put on my heaviest coat and went out the door. I'd met Lisa three months earlier and fell in love with her as soon as I saw her. She was thin, beautiful, and feminine, and I knew I had to have her. Yet I could never get anywhere with her, and two months in I found out she had a boyfriend. I pretty much backed off at that point, yet here she was now telling me to come meet up. When I reached the bar she was at, I found her sitting at this table waiting for me, dressed to kill. As soon as I sat down, she bought us drinks and got to the point. She and her boyfriend broke up. She started to tell me about it, and then she started saying we should go to my place later. Oh man, I thought I'd finally done it. I imagined all the sex and cuddling and happiness in store. What was actually in store, though, was one of my biggest romantic failures of all time. We chatted for a while, then left, and Lisa proposed going to a diner before we went to my place. We went, yet not five minutes after we got there, I saw her eyes light up, and I turned to see this guy. She got up and hugged him. His name was Alan, and he lived in her building. Well, they immediately sat down next to each other across from me, ordered food, and started to laugh and flirt. You see, what I hadn't realized was Lisa didn't need a connection date like I'd been giving her. She needed arousal. 
and inswept Alan, all ready to make her feel alive. I had no idea what was happening. I just knew Alan was stealing her right out from under me. Nothing I said could get her attention back. She even fed him strawberries from her pancakes. And after 15 terrible minutes, the real gut punch came. She asked me to pay for all three of us. I said, no way, I'm not paying for everybody. She insisted. Alan just laughed, and I refused. Finally, I excused myself to the bathroom to go concoct a plan on how to turn this disaster around. And I did form a plan, however, it was too late. That's because when I came back out of the bathroom, our booth was empty. They were gone. The waitress gave me the bill, and I paid it, and then she handed me Lisa's cell phone. She dropped it in her haste to rush off with Alan and ditch me. I headed home, her phone in hand, and partway back, I tossed it in a snow-covered garbage can. I felt bad about that later. That's not me. I don't destroy people's stuff. Yet it forced me to realize I had a problem getting the girls I wanted, and I was never going to solve it by hoping to meet the right girl or somehow get lucky. So I started reading about dating and psychology everything I could get my hands on on how women's minds work. And after a while, I discovered the pickup artists, these guys who went out and met girls wherever. I found the best guy, this guy Dimitri, who lived in New York, and I traveled there to train with him. Dimitri's stuff was light years ahead of its time. In fact, the pickup community today is only just starting to figure out stuff he was teaching 10 years ago. My first night going out with Dimitri, he had me take this hat I had on and put it on a girl's head. It seemed silly, yet as soon as I did it, this girl was ready to kiss me. Dimitri was the one who introduced me to the small ask. That's the effortless way to get almost any girl out on a date I'll introduce you to later. And he also explained how some girls, like that girl with a hat, are just looking for arousal. If you can push the right buttons, they don't even want connection. That's when it started to click for me about what I'd done wrong with Lisa. She needed an arousal date, yet I spent the whole time connecting with her. After I got back from New York, I started to meet other men who excelled with women. Smooth talkers, nightclub bouncers, scrubby guys who met girls at dive bars. And I discovered these guys, Dimitri and my other friends, had something in common. They had sex with almost every girl they met in just one date. And these girls would become devoted girlfriends immediately after this, too. What was more was they went for all kinds of girls. Dimitri liked shy girls, or even virgins, while my other buddies liked sexy, flirtatious girls. It worked no matter what type of girl she was. So I started to analyze exactly what they were doing. When I talked to other people about it, they told me this method my friends used would never work. Guys in the pickup community called it fool's mate and thought if a girl went to bed with you without complex tricks and routines, it was just dumb luck. And ordinary people told me it was impossible to date girls like this. You had to build up trust with lots of dates and FaceTime first. Yet to me, it made intuitive sense. After all, if I could so completely blow it in one date, like that date with Lisa, then shouldn't it also be possible to take one date and outright make a girl your girlfriend in it? So I dove into the research. I wanted to flesh out what I'd seen my friends do. I read over 1,000 scientific studies on dating, relationships, and attraction. And I discovered a field called mating intelligence. What mating intelligence is, is how informed you are about the dating process. Some people are more informed because they've studied dating and attraction. While most people, men and women alike, have a far more limited degree of information. The higher your mating intelligence, the better you trigger attraction and loyalty in women. And I began to wonder what it was the men with higher mating intelligence knew that ordinary men did not. What it was men like my friends and mentors knew. I plowed through the research to try and find the prime factors. Factors behind a girl's decision to sleep with a man and devote herself to him as a girlfriend. I discovered three of them. One that had to do with how similar a girl feels she is to a guy. One that had to do with how invested in and committed to him she feels. And one that had to do with how much arousal in her he triggered with things like risk and excitement. And so I took all the pieces I'd seen my friends use. And I took the three major findings I had from the research I'd poured over. And I stripped down my entire dating process to just these few key steps. My aim was to leverage all this to have women tell me what kind of date they wanted which of those three dates it could be, connection, arousal, or hookup. And once I knew that, then I'd just fulfill their fantasies. I worked for months to refine my system before it was time to test. In fact, I grew so obsessed with this, I slept a mere four hours a night and often fell asleep at work. Yet in the end, I had a perfected, optimized system ready to try out on a girl, and the results demolished my expectations. They even floored my buddies and teachers. The first time I test drove my new and improved system was a night in July. I was waiting to take the train home, and I spotted a girl waiting too. 
The train is kind of my thing. I love to meet girls on the train. I'll share how I do that with you a little later. I actually have a specific process I use. However, for now, I walked over to her and I said hello, and she said hi. She was stunning, tall, thin, and a statuesque face. Well, it turned out this girl was a fashion model. I'd never dated a model before, and I felt pretty intimidated. So all I could do was just follow my one-date process and ask her out. She was a little unsure about me. Even so, she said okay. We went on the date two days later. I did not feel confident about it. I wasn't used to dating girls this beautiful, and I'd always had trouble connecting with girls of her background. Popular in school, lots of friends, zero mutual interests between us. Plus, I knew she was skeptical about me. I hadn't made the best first impression when I walked up. All I did know was she needed an arousal date, the same date I failed to give Lisa before. Well, it only took a few minutes in the cafe to get her super interested in me. I ran the arousal date to the letter, and she ate it up. And after 40 minutes, she agreed to a comedy show with me. By this point, she stopped to tell me that she felt so connected to me, yet I hadn't told her anything about myself. I just followed the outline for my date number two of the three types of dates. After the comedy club, I invited her home and got an easy yes. And at home, we had sex. It was the first time she'd ever slept with anyone before the third date. And to top it off, she wanted to continue to see me afterwards. That stunned me. Here was this beautiful high-status girl, and she wanted to be my girlfriend. I might have let her, too. Except my job took me to Southern California for good the following week. As you can imagine, what happened next was I put my system to use in a big way. It completely changed the way I approached dating. Whereas before I struggled to know what to say to girls, or I'd have awkward moments where I didn't know what to do, now I had a roadmap to follow that took me past all the hazards that used to throw me off with girls. And now, if I wanted a girl to be my girlfriend, I knew exactly what to do to get her. I started to have girls thank me after I'd made them girlfriends. I even had a girlfriend tell me she wished she'd met me five years earlier, so she could have skipped her prior boyfriends and gone straight to dating me. That girl was an architect, and if you want to know what she looked like, just look up glamour model Jenya D. That's basically her, except her chin's not as pointy and her boobs are 100% natural D cups. The real kicker was how devoted the system made women to me. I had girlfriends buy me clothes, desserts, little gifts. One even flew me to Peru. I had girlfriends cook me amazing dinners and then demand sex from me as their reward. And over the last 10 years, as a direct result of the one date, I have had one dream girl after another as girlfriends. The cornerstone of this system is my breadcrumb principle. I'll get to that in a moment. First, one of the crucial aspects to get right is that arousal factor. Remember, there are three kinds of dates you can take a girl out on. We're going to talk about date number two right now. To understand date two, that arousal date, you must be familiar with the famous Shaky Bridge study. So let me tell you about this experiment these crazy scientists did in 1974. They put a man and a woman on a safe bridge that was a little unstable, which made it just a little scary to be on when the wind blew. Well, when scientists put this guy and girl on the bridge, their attraction for each other shot up, all because of just that little bit of extra scariness and excitement. Now, you may not always have a shaky bridge to excite girls with, so another surefire way researchers have identified to ramp up arousal is to break some rules. And don't worry, you don't have to go speed down the highway on a motorcycle like James Dean. Nor do you have to, or should you, do anything illegal. Instead, you just have to look for little rules you can break, like plop down at a table marked reserved, or sneak into the VIP section of a nightclub. The worst that can happen is somebody who works there tells you to move. However, to most women, this is thrilling. She's grown up having everyone tell her to follow these rules. And then you come along and just shatter them. And when you make her your girlfriend and she discovers you're actually a pretty good guy, can you say risk taker with a heart of gold? You immediately become every girl's dream guy. The guy who shows her the stuff she's not supposed to see and yet cares about her. This is how I get girls so devoted to me. And don't worry if you have trouble coming up with harmless rules to break. I've got a big list of breakable rules I've put together over the years. I'll share that list with you in a few moments. Now, the neat thing about this system, as you may realize, is it handles everything about dating for you. I don't worry about what to talk about with girls or when to ask them for their phone numbers or when to make a move anymore. And women almost never flake on me, ever. Which is a complete change because they used to flake on me all the time. The way I turned that around, by the way, was via a piece of research I came across on compliance. I restructured my texting around it, and not only has it almost eliminated flaking, it's made me so good at texting I can borrow a friend's phone, send off a single text to a girl that's not responding to him, 
and 90% of the time she will immediately write back to apologize and offer to meet whenever he wants. Before I tell you how that works, let me give you that tip to identify which date she needs to become your girlfriend. It's pretty simple. When you first talk to her, you're going to ask her for a small little favor. Just something like give you her hand or show you her bracelet or turn around and show you her dress. And you're going to watch how she responds to that. If her response is enthusiastic, odds are she likes you a lot already. Now, if she seems neutral to it, then she's either a connector or an arousal seeker. And you'll use a little connection and a little arousal with each girl. However, the amounts you use will vary by which type of girl she is. If her response is enthusiastic, then to confirm, you're just going to ask her for a few more small favors. You can take these right from the list of favors I'm going to give you in just a moment. If she continues to respond with enthusiasm, you can go straight to the hookup date. That's our date number three of the three different dates you can take a girl out on. This is the date where you have her join you at your place to cook food or watch a movie. You don't need anything special for it. You don't even need music or alcohol. All you need is somewhere to sit down, a TV or computer, and a couple glasses of water. When she comes in, you get her a glass of water, not alcohol, and you have her sit down. Then, on either your computer or the TV, you put on some music videos and keep the volume low. After that, all you do is use my 10-minute kiss rule, and she'll be in your bed in minutes. Now, maybe you're wondering why you've never heard any of this before. It's powerful stuff, yet it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So why isn't everybody telling you to do this with girls? Well, it's because there's something of a conspiracy to keep you from this information. I know a lot of people like to blame script writers and talking heads, and these folks are wrong. However, it's not the case that movies, magazines, and TV shows deliberately mislead you. Instead, it's in fact the case that these productions have accidentally misled you. There's a principle called Hanlon's Razor that states, you should never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. In the media's case, you've got a bunch of people who suck with women, and they write movie scripts and run talk shows that give advice on how to date, which is kind of like if a voodoo witch doctor was to tell you how to make money on Wall Street. He may be good at voodoo, even so, he doesn't know the first thing about put options or securities. As soon as I realized this myself, I immediately tuned that stuff out. Yet, I know a lot of guys didn't. So if you fell for any of that, don't worry, because yeah, so did I. Both men and women get sucked in by what pop culture and media says women want. Yet I'll tell you what, I have had gorgeous girlfriends with advanced educations and big money jobs. Girls with big boobs and pencil-thin waists and knockout faces and hair. Girls who only ever dated rich, handsome guys who treated them to gifts and vacations and who thought this was what they wanted. And almost all of them I started dating when I was broke, unemployed, and doubtful of my future. I'm not broke anymore. However, the one common denominator to every girlfriend I've had the last 10 years is one date. It's how I met them, it's how I dated them, and it's how I made them so helplessly in love and devoted. Oh, and not to worry, if you date up like I do, and you catch any flack for your lack of success or direction, just tell her this. Even if I haven't made it yet, I am a man who gets what he wants. When my chance comes, it will be mine. You see, with a system like One Date, if you've got good looks or money or a nice car, that's a bonus. You don't need any of that because you understand the woman herself. All you do is follow the process and enjoy the journey as you go from frustration to able to ask her out and hear yes. Pick the date that fits what kind of girl she is. Use the One Date texting sequence to get her out and then run the date, and within a few hours max, she's in your bed. And just like that, she goes from friend or stranger to your girl. And it works like clockwork, too. I designed one date so that any guy who followed these steps could unlock these results. I focused on making every aspect of it so intuitive, fun, and straight up easy to use to make sure guys can use it right away and get results immediately. Now, for the first time, I'm making the system available in its entirety. As you might guess, I call that system the one-date system.